homeowners in Walsenburg want the city to take action against several condemned properties, which they say have become an eyesore. Chief investigative reporter Eric Ross obtained city records showing multiple homes have become a hub for homeless, rodents, and dangerous living conditions, but no one seems to be taking swift action. Some homes have sat on the city's condemnation list for years. Now, at one point in time, the city was demolishing unsafe properties and then billing the homeowners later for demolition work. But when the city had no real way to get the property owners to pay them back, they backed off because the city was ultimately losing money. That's issue number one. Issue number two is that for a period of time this year, we discovered there was no code enforcement officer, no building official, no one to really follow up on code enforcement complaints. We're told that has now changed. The city of Walsenburg had a pretty uh, active building and code enforcement department up until the beginning of this year. Charles Bryant lives next to a condemned property, which in 2018 city records deemed uninhabitable. The city said the home has a collapsing roof structure, collapsing walls, mold, and rodents. But that hasn't stopped the property owner from renting it out. And sometimes people get creative when you do not have fully functional utilities. These photos Charles took show a hose running from a nearby ditch to this massive tank Charles believes is used to store siphoned water. I contact the sheriff's department. I get directed that it's a code enforcement issue. It, it's a circle, and that's where my frustration really came in and why I reached out to you. We took his concerns straight to interim city administrator Greg Sund. That's not the only time we've ever discovered that. We have, when you have irrigation ditches running through town, occasionally you're going to find somebody putting a hose in one of them and drawing water. That is stealing water. Can they be fined? Yes. But they haven't been to date? N not that I'm aware of. Combing through city records, we found a total of 24 condemned properties in Walsenburg. Four, including the one next door to Bryant's house, is owned by the same man. 116 Walson Avenue was condemned in 2018 after the house caught fire and had a major asbestos spill. 342 East 5th was first reported back in 2016 for a broken roof and rodent infestation. 138 West 4th Street was added to the list in 2019 for a failing roof, collapsing interior walls, no utilities, and the home was occupied by transients. We recognize we have an issue with a lot of dilapidated buildings. But he says the way the city used to go after properties by demolishing them and trying to recoup the money later just wasn't working. We were just leaning the property after we incurred the cost, and the likelihood of getting your money back when that happens is very, very low. So that put you guys in a hole, I assume. Yes, we've just been spending money. We haven't been getting money back. With the city going into the red, they stopped pursuing efforts to demolish unsafe, condemned properties. In fact, every home that was on a list to be demoed was removed. How do you justify a home being on a demolition list one day and not the next day? Well, it, we, we just backed off on the demolition orders because we wanted to make sure that we could prove that we were establishing the correct process for identifying and carrying out demolition. This includes making sure the city crosses its T's and dots its I's before demolition work. Otherwise, they could find themselves in more financial trouble. In addition to not being able to recoup money lost from previous demo work, we found another problem within the city. According to city records, there hasn't been a code enforcement officer in the city of Walsenburg since April. So between April and late June, when that position was finally filled, who was doing code enforcement? We weren't really doing much code enforcement. So it's kind of like the wild, wild west. Well, that's not really that long of a length of time. Anytime you have a small number of staff, we have 25 total employees. When you, when you lose somebody, it takes you two, three months to fill that job. And in our fair and balanced coverage, we do want to give that new hire time to address the previous issues he's now inheriting at no fault of his own. 
Meanwhile, the interim city administrator says the plan is to launch an urban renewal authority to help oversee and fund this massive undertaking. The plan, he says, would be to always start with voluntary compliance. If that doesn't work, instead of putting a lien on the property and billing for demolition work afterwards, the city wants the power to legally acquire the property and then use block grant funds in coordination with the urban renewal authority to renovate or rebuild the home and create housing for lower income people. If you just tear down the house and you don't look at the future, you're just going to end up with a vacant lot there that you're doing nothing with. City Council would serve as the governing body for the Urban Renewal Authority, which so far has not been approved. But Sund promises changes are coming. You're pretty confident that I shouldn't be revisiting this issue six months or a year from now. You're, we're going to see some progress made. Well, I would certainly hope we have it operating well before then. I, I, I don't want a, pro a program to just stall. I think it's important that you move forward, that you adopt what works for the community, and that you start achieving things. If you're not making any progress, the public will see that too. Bryant says there's been a lot of talk. He's now just waiting for action. We're just really wanting to, uh, as citizens, voice our concerns uh, to the city that uh, you know, it is a top priority of the citizens to clean up these blighted properties. And for those of you who know me, you know I just don't go away. So for the city officials watching us right now in Walsenburg, be sure to mark your calendars for January 4th, 2021, 9.30 in the morning. That's the time I'll be calling to follow up on your progress. It will also mark six months since we first sat down with the interim city administrator. Always watching out for you, Southern Colorado. I'm Eric Ross, News 5 Investigates. As always, if you have a problem or issue you'd like Eric and the News 5 Investigates team to look into, you can call our 24-hour tip line at any time at the number on your screen here or send an email to News 5 Investigates at KOAA.com.